Assalamu alaikum and hello guys. So in this lecture, we're going to look on the next subtopic, which is the last ever subtopic in topic 4, 4.5 method. So in this topic, 4.5, there will be three subtopic, 4.51, 4.52 and 4.53. And specifically today, we're going to look and going to cover on this first two subtopic which is the first one introduction to java method and the second one is predefined method so let's so let's not waste any more time and let's start okay so at the end of this first subtopic 4.1 introduction to java method you will be able to explain the meaning and advantage of method explain two types of method which is predefined method and user defined method at the end of this lecture okay all right so siapa yang kat sini familiar dengan kedai ni bus ni ataupun ke siapa tak pernah nampak ini adalah satu kedai yang dibuat fruit juice simple as that okay so bus is a company that sell us fruit juice so normally bila kita nak order kan dia dah ada siap-siap dah ada a list of menus and we can choose we can read what are the ingredients inside each of the menu and kita boleh pilih betul tak dan terus senang kita minta okay let's say kita nak minta break it to go go so kita ambil lah menu tu betul however there is another option where we can actually choose and customize our order Ah, ni. Create your own juice. So, we can choose up to two uh, two fruits, super juice. Ah, we will be kurang macam gitu lah. Okay. In your opinion lah kan. Kalau you sebagai pekerja dekat Boost. Mana yang you lebih prefer pekerja, lebih prefer customer atau client you datang dekat you. Mana yang lebih cepat untuk kita siap. Untuk pekerja tu siap buat. Betul tak? Dan kalau tiba-tiba kita datang dan kita kata kita nak create your own juice. Semestinya pekerja tu akan reaction dia lebih kurang beginilah. Kan dia rasa macam okay here we go. Because dia akan rasa macam banyak lagi masa dia kena spend. Dia kena take note setiap apa yang dia nak. Tahu tak? Compared to kalau terus direct kita ambil super smoothies tu. Kan? Jadi method. The concept of method pun begitu jugalah. Okay dalam Java. Tapi. So, so, method ni apa dia? Method ni is a collection of statements that are grouped together to execute an expression. So, statements can be input, output, while, for, loop and so on. An expression, you dah tahu dah, there are three types of expression, arithmetic, boolean, relational. So, basically, is we have, for example lah, kita ada satu, kita bayangkan kita dah buat satu robot, betul tak? Dan robot ni kita tahu pergerakan dia, kita tahu dia perlukan turn right, turn left, wave hand, show happy face. So, this commonly actions that this robot do, kita dah siap-siap buat dalam bentuk method. So, method ni kita boleh panggil je terus. Method ni and it's dia terus shortcut. Maksudnya dia jimat masa, kita hanya panggil balik saja method-method ni tanpa perlu kita nak coding semuanya secara manual. Ah, okay. So, tadi relate balik tadi method dengan konsep air kita tadi tu. Okay, so method ni adalah satu collection of statements yang kita dah siap-siap buat di mana kita boleh panggil balik saja anytime bila kita nak pakai. Ha, maksudnya nanti kita punya main method pun akan nampak lebih kemas dan tak banyak kod. Okay, tapi kita apa? Kita akan go through one by one. Okay, as we go through the lecture today. Alright, so this is the definition of a method. Okay. If you see here, there are two examples of coding and both of them are doing the same thing. Okay, cuba you tengok dekat sini eh. Memang kalau kita tengok kan, the right hand side, belah kanan ni lebih panjang sedikit compared to the left hand side. Ke, mungkin you akan cakap, okay, yang belah kiri ni lagi okay sebab dia pendek. Betul tak? But if you notice something, okay, di, you cuba you tengok main method dia. Okay, tengok dekat sini. Class even out the main method here. Okay, ada banyak banyak benda nak kena buat. Betul tak? Dan compared tu kalau you tengok main method dekat yang sebelah kanan ni. Okay, hanya ada creating scanner object, message, reading value. And then terus panggil saja method kita dah buat. Which is find even out. And even out ni adalah method. Okay, a method yang dah siap-siap maksudnya segala hasil kerja ni kita buat dalam method yang berbeza tapi masih dalam kelas yang sama kelas even odd. So we 
So today we're going to look on about method. Kita tengok method ni. Okay. Secara, lah, secara kasarnya you boleh tengok kat sini. Kan kita punya main method kita dah jadi lebih pendek. Lebih ringkas. Ha. Okay. So apa kelebihan-kelebihan method ni? So pertama advantage of method is you are able to reuse the code without having to retype again and again. And the code that you written will be more readable. Alamak, tersalah typo di sini ya. Eh? Readable and easier to debug errors. Okay, and with the use of method, you are able to increase the reusability of your code. Hence, reduce the size of your code. Okay, ha, reduce the size of code maksudnya dekat bahagian main method tadi tu kita mahu nampak makin ringkas. Okay, then lebih jimat masa. And last but not least, is with a method you are able to modularize complex problem. What does it mean by modularize? So modularize it means that you are able to break your code down into a smaller, more manageable chunks in a sensible way to improve readability. So kalau you tengok kat sini kan, kalau cara yang not modularize, you akan tengok you punya main method akan banyak statement, statement, statement. Contoh kita nak buat uh, empat, contoh kita nak buat the sum of a two numbers, kita nak buat Empat kali kan? Jadi, kita akan kena buat statement tu banyak kali. Banyak-banyak. Kalau compare to modularize, kita com kita compile kan dia punya cara untuk calculate the sum of that two numbers. So, we just call back the method. Okay, dan kita ulang je panggil balik method tu empat kali. Ha, dari situ kita dah nampak lah. Dia dah menjimatkan. Dan membuat and increase the efficiency of your coding. Okay? Alright. So, how to use this method ni? Macam mana kita nak start guna method ni? Ada dua cara. So, the first one is you need to create a method. So, you need to define a method first. So, method definition happening outside of the main method body. Ha, ni ni. Nampak ni main method kan? Dia punya kali bracket di sini, berhenti di sini. Jadi, method definition ni berlaku di luar main method. But still inside the class. So, maksudnya masih lagi di dalam kelas yang sama. Tapi, dia di luar main method. Sebab kita nak create method baru kan? So, ini namanya method definition. And then, the second one is to call back the method that you have already defined. Kata kita define method kita, betul tak? Di luar. Jadi, kalau kita nak guna method yang kita dah buat ni, kita kena panggil balik method kita tu di dalam main method. Sebab ingat, komputer dia hanya akan execute code, whatever code inside the main method. So that is why this is called main method. So apa-apa yang kita nak komputer kita buat, kita kena letak dalam main method. Tapi disebabkan main method ni ada hanya satu method, betul tak? Tapi kalau kita letak semua benda dalam main method, kita punya kode akan jadi lebih serabut dan terlalu panjang. Jadi sebab tu wujudnya method ni. Okay? Dan lepas kita dah create method, kita kena call back the method. So we need to create a method call. So method call happening inside the main method of the class as the one yang saya highlight ni lah. Okay? So remember, to use the method, there are two ways. First one is method defini definition. The second one is method call. Okay. Next, we look on the two types of method. Method ni ada dua jenis. Yang pertama, predefined method adalah standard library method yang dah sedia. Dan tersedia wujud adalah dalam Java. And the second one is the user defined method. As the name itself tells adalah method Defined by programmer. User tu kita lah kan. User define. Maksudnya kita sebagai programmer kita yang define sendiri method kita tu. Okay. So the the difference between these two method is that predefined is a method already defined in Java class library. And also known as a standard library method or a built-in method in Java. For example, yang kita dah guna selama ni. Math.pow, math.sqrt. Kan. Okay, kalau user define method, we give it the name, kita yang bagi tahu apa step-step yang dia kena buat, kita yang bagi tahu. For example, dalam contoh ni, kita bagi nama cult sale. So, ini adalah nama method kita. Okay, nanti in the next lecture, in the next lecture, second lecture, nanti kita akan tengok sama-sama macam mana kita nak buat user define method ni. Okay, alright, so we already look at the two types of method. Next, kita masuk the next Subtopic which is 4.5.2.
talk about predefined method. So, at the end of this subtopic, you will be able to identify the use of the common predefined method which is POW and SQRT. So, dalam syllabus kita, kita cover dua ni saja. Walaupun dalam uh, you punya lab, kan, kita punya amali, kita dah buat banyak. Kita dapatkan mat.max, mat.min, kan. Tapi untuk lecture saja kita cover dua ini. Okay, POW and SQRT. So, let's look on the difference between these two. So, map.pow obviously come from the word power. So, it's a method that written the value of the first argument which is x lah dalam kita bercontoh ni. Raised to the power of second argument which is y. So, x to the power of y. And the written type of pow is double. Maksud written type ni adalah dia keluarkan balik value dalam bentuk double. So, the written kan. The written dia keluarkan. Written. Written back value. Okay, so x refer to the base, y refer to the power. So, example, kalau kita nak buat 4 to the power of 2, so it will be mat.pow x, 2. Okay, on the other side, mat.sqrt is a method that is used to return the square root of a number. And number ni apa? Kita letak x lah, for example ni kan. So, the written type is also similar as mat.pow, which is double. Okay, so we look at the example code between these two predefined methods. So we have this class, simple class here where we have two integers, x equals to 2, y assigned to 3, x equals to 2, but y, x assigned to 2, y, y is assigned to 3. So we have the we have the x to the power of y and we call back the predefined method back to power x, y. So the sample will be 8.0. So maksudnya 2 to the power of 3. Okay, next, mat.sqrt. Okay, again, same code. The difference is just we call back the mat.sqrt. Okay, the difference kat sini, kita boleh letak operation apa yang kita nak. Maksudnya, macam square root kan kita buat matematik kan. Kita boleh dapatkan square root 1 plus 2 ke, A plus B ke. So, kat sini saya sengaja je letak X plus Y. So, it means that 2 plus 3 will be 5 kan. So, the square root of 5 will be 2.236067977499979. Okay, kenapa dia tak comel macam ni? Sebab kita sendiri yang tak comelkan dia. Okay. Normally, you already know kita boleh buat dengan 2 decimal places ke 3 decimal places lah. Okay. Tu tak apalah. Tu extra. Alright. So, yeah. That's all for the first lecture of topic 4.5. Five. So, in the next lecture, kita akan lebih bincang in detail on the difference of the user-defined method. Okay? So, that's all for our class today. Thank you very much and see you all in the next lecture. Bye-bye!